I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. I will entertain a motion to do the why warrants for January 12th, expense warrants for February 8th, and the expense warrant for February 9th. Make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? No. Nope. Any motion to approve the select minutes for 12 15 15? I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Nope. All right. Entertain a motion to acknowledge the minutes from the Council of Aging on 1 12 16. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Nope. All right. Announcements, uh, Mr. Wallen, District Date to Senator Ann Gobi will be holding office hours at Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, February 17th. All are welcome. Any other announcements? Anybody wish to address the board this morning? I get a quick question. Welcome, sir. Evening. Evening. Morning. Good morning. You said evening. That's why I always say morning to everyone. Yeah. What do you guys do on the uh, Channel 194 now? Well, we haven't uh, accepted it. We haven't talked about it, but uh, he has tendered his resignation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we thought so. What you do? So you have to do I, I, I defer to that. I don't know. Yeah. Just if you have any questions when we talk about it on the agenda, we can do that. Yeah, Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to address this morning? Mary Nunn, department head meeting. Bruce. Restrooms. How we doing? Great. Spoke with <laughs> spoke with the um, plumbing inspector yesterday. A potential plumber uh, negotiating the price. Worked out details. Uh, keeping the sink with a vacuum vent uh, tied into the old cesspool. Tying the bathroom into there, and that's the first step. And then we move on from a plan from there. How about move on? What do you mean? Then we move on. Yep. What do we do? Do we? I know you had you had a lady's room. Uh, plan for the, for the wall behind you, mm -hmm. the assessor's office. Um, my honest thoughts are that's a grandest scheme as we'll ever have in this town hall in the next 10 years. Could be totally wrong. I could be totally wrong, but I don't see the townspeople after seeing this year's tax increase willing to step up to the plate to renovate this town hall in a major manner in the immediate future. My plan is a five-year plan. I think we've talked about that as a board um, with the help of Tantasco, which we couldn't do with that over there. Well, we could, but nobody wanted to. Right. Um, obviously, labor is a huge issue. Anyone that doubts that, take a look at the labor over there. And I think with that, we can get what we want on this floor done in five years. It's possible. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still looking at the, the one wall behind you mm -hmm. and saying, even I, I changed my, my thoughts on the process often. But that wall is still the area. That area is still a restroom. And I don't know why we couldn't do two restrooms. Two male, two, two female, two male. Just you have the access. Yeah, just for the simple fact that it'll deviate from the plan. No, it won't. You still have four stalls involved. You take out a petitioning wall and they're back in there again. But from the plan that the board has approved, it alters the plan. Because in that plan is a... a yeah, plan Steve. Plan. All right. And, and Clarence and Linda. We have an election coming up. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't get access to the handicap ramp. We have a button at the top of the stairs to open a door. We have nothing at the handicap ramp to open the door. All right? You just walk inside the town hall. We don't have a restroom for a handicapped person. All the thresholds, all the doorknobs, nothing's been done with that. We approved some money for that in, at June's town meeting. We have done nothing. Are we going to wait three years and do nothing more? No. That's what you're telling me, Steve. I, you just told me you got a five-year plan. I didn't tell you that at all. I told you the grand scheme of this floor. You're, you're bringing bathroom into a grand scheme of the town hall with the handicap accessibility. I sure am. It's a small snowball going down the big hill. We approved money for it. Correct. Right. When are we going to act? Eight months ago, and we're no further along, and the thing backs up at least three times a week. Well, that's it's the issue. That's the issue that we're dealing with now. That, that, no that, further along than we were in June. That doesn't help the handicap accessibility well, issue. We, we are a lot further along because now we have a septic system in the back. We have an outlet coming in through the town hall. We have a plan for the town hall, so it, it is moving forward. I'm afraid you took this. You took the bathrooms on yourself, and you you're not making it happen, Steve. 
it is making it happen. I'm getting knocked around 24-7. Every plan that we, we come and board with a plan, and we just keep Dave knocks us, you knock us, Mike knocks us. Why can't somebody sit down and implement? That's what we're trying to do. We had, But we now had, you're talking a five-year plan. We had three at that. Bruce, what are you doing? You can take that small doing? snowball of the bathroom and, yeah. talk, and, and turning my words around. The five-year plan is this whole first floor, not this bathroom. We've gone, out, we've, we've gone out to three plumbers for bids. Mm -hmm. None of them turned a bid back in. Yeah. I met with another plumber last because week. Because of why? You Mike did too. It. No, I don't believe that for a second. Because somebody, somebody, the way that I understand, somebody told them that the town's buying all the materials, and that's why they're not bidding on the job. Well, one of the plumbers said that he's not bidding on the job because he's got too much work. Another one didn't even know about it. And the one that I met with last week is working up a bid right now. But that's still only to tie in the existing bathroom. Not at all. Oh, you are you are going forward with the other restrooms then? Correct. <coughs> well, to get the bids. Yeah. To get the bids. We have to have somebody do it. I can't go down there and do it myself. I can physically go. If you want me to do it, I'll go get fine. But it doesn't work. I don't even know what you're talking about at this point. Are we talking the renovation of the one or the additional bathrooms? One bathroom. This bathroom here, turning this assessor's office into a bathroom. Into a single bathroom. As the plan states that we've discussed multiple times as a board for multiple Steve, months. Steve, the last time I sat at this department head meeting, you told me that was off the table. You wanted four ladies' rooms in here. That's what you said. Bruce, it hasn't changed a bit. The plan is for a bathroom here, a bathroom there. Mm -hmm. The implementation that this board has talked about several times with you in the room is this bathroom is going to have those four stalls. That's the first step. We can't get a plumber to bid on it. You can't do the job if no one's bidding on it. I met with a plumber last week mm -hmm. that is finally willing to bid on it. That plumber has actually bid on connecting that bathroom to that septic now. Separate, separate Correct. issue, right? That's a complete separate. We're, you're bringing up three separate issues right now. That you yeah, off in this bathroom yeah. that we've been dealing with every single day. But, but I think, Steve, to <coughs> what we're looking to do is to get that bid in that you are striving towards. I'm trying. I was on the phone. With, I was on the phone with them three times yesterday. And given that you will have information, we will be a lot smarter in making decisions. We will I, I can only do what I can do. Exactly. Exactly. And I believe we have to move forward too because we have um, elections coming up this fall. And I know in previous years, we've always had the states come out here to make sure that the building is handicapped accessible to go into. You know, because one year I know we have problems with the, uh, with the ramp, and then they want to, they'll probably want to see also with the handicap entrance that, you know, we do have an entrance. Mr. Mr. Hopkins is completely aware of everything that we're doing here. I've been on the phone with him a couple of times. No, but the state themselves. Mr. Hopkins is the state. Well, this is, they usually send, when I was around, they used to send out somebody from uh, the divisions of the elections division would come out and look at the old one. And um, we don't want them to go stay in that room. Did we they can't have this room for, you know, that you uh, was handicapped accessible because, I mean, where else would you go? Did they shut the town hall one year on that, Linda, because the, it did not fit the needs and everything they else, and they, and they said find another building? Yeah, we used, and, and we I used the highway garage. garage. I used the highway garage one year because it was yes. brand new, and then the next, another year I had used the school. school. But now they're, they really don't want you to use the schools. They want you to stay away from the schools. Right. The thing is, I mean, we don't have another building that we can go to and run these elections. Well, we're going to have a church next door, and we get bathrooms. Then, but I'm just saying, you know, this is how, or why I feel we need to move forward with this and get it done before November, or even before September. Can you stop picking on Steve? No. Well, I'm not picking on Steve. I want, I want to see some positive action is what I want to see. I understand. If, if you stay in the loop, which hopefully today you are, there's, there's action. I can't guarantee that's possible. Pretty to tell you, Steve, the honest truth. Pretty hard to stay in your loop because you keep your loop closed. How do I keep my loop closed? I'm going to deal with the contractor with my cell phone. That's what you said. What? That's exactly what you said. Last no. department head meeting. What are you talking about? When somebody watching this town hall wants to know what, what projects the town has, like a plumber or a heating guy, you said you deal with him on your cell phone and you walk him through. Walk the him home. through the project. That's what you and said. I've, I've done that with three people. And, and, it's I, not and, I dealt, and I dealt with it's the. Not I dealt, it does work. It works every single day. You can ask our administrative assistant. Yeah. I'm on the phone pretty much half my day with this office and with contractors. 
We'll talk about the heating issue. I settled that over the phone. And then I had to come down because he was giving her an attitude. It's not the way you do business, Steve. It, it's you don't what? do it over your cell phone for a town. Right. Anybody else? I'm just here to follow up on the bathroom issue. I left a message with Mr. White yesterday. He hasn't gotten back to me. The plumbing inspector is going to allow him to just do a hub list with um, connectors. The vacuum on the back, I think, I don't know if you met with him or you met with him. I've got the quote okay. from him. He could do this as early as tomorrow. It's a 12-hour job, 2600 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's not a 12-hour job because... That's what least, he told me. Well, that's why I asked him to deal with me, not you. So, so Mike, what's the follow-up? What's the what's, what? What's, I, I'm cur Mike said he's here to follow up, and I'm curious what well, the follow-up Well, I'm, I'm just, we, I've been dealing with a plumber about the tie-in to the existing system. And I asked you and I asked him to let him deal with me, because the Board of Health doesn't give him the permission to do this, the Board of Selectmen does. Well, you know, from our perspective, you know, we wanted to see some immediate action, and I knew you were dealing with him, so I just wanted to get something in writing. I've got that. When I spoke to him, he's ready to go, and I understand you're going to... You know, you need some money to do this. According to a comment, well, I, I did this over the phone. Is that okay with you? Not yeah. sure. I haven't heard it yet. So last night we had a phone conversation with the advisory committee. They say that there's a little over seven thousand in the town hall improvement fund. Okay. We're going to have to ask Betty for that. And if it is, we can use that. I am not willing to entertain a motion for that price because he hasn't. I, I asked Mr. White specifically to deal with me, not Mike, because this is what's going to happen. That well, look, I emailed this to you all yesterday. I haven't seen it. Mike, can I get some clarification? Yeah. What are we dealing with the kitchen sink? The what? The kitchen sink? I spoke to Bob Wall about this yesterday, I too. as well. What he said, temporarily, what you would do after tying the septic system in to this bathroom is that you could continue to use that sink by putting the uh, a temporary vacuum breaker for the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. And that's how that would be resolved. Wow. Is that compliant with Title five? It's I didn't not, discuss not, that I, with him. Yeah, well that, that's it's a board of health issue to use a septic. The plumbing inspector is for the venting problem because there's no vent to it now. Right, but I don't believe that's compliant with Title five. It may not be, so if it isn't, then we have to shut the sink down or right. get it tied into the, uh, right. into the septic system. You know, we got an, a lot of issues to resolve here, and as far as your proposal, you really need to talk to Bob Wall more because he says... I talked with him for a half hour yesterday. So okay, then you probably got some of the same information that I did, and uh, for the ADA bathroom, it has to be 20 by 20, and he thinks that the uh, four stalls for the ladies' room is overkill. Mm -hmm. And but this, this is a gentleman that told me yesterday not to put a bubbler out there to put bottles of water at wheelchair height. Yeah, so... so. I think there's a lot more to resolve than the plan that you have, and that's something you all are going to have to address. So. But so has the Board of Health issued any order as far as Title V goes? We issued an order back in November. You did? Okay. Yeah. And that said that the bathrooms had to be tied in? Yeah. But not the sink. It didn't address it the It didn't sink. address the sink. It addressed the, the bathroom it, to be it, tied in. It has to be everything, and I met with your board immediately after that. It was a split decision because one member was absent and right. never heard anything for two months. Then I was in on a teleconference for that last meeting. I was supposed to meet with Mr. Leahy this evening. I canceled that meeting because I think we have a result. And the resolution, I think, should be adopted by this board to do this immediately. Well, I'm not going to do it for this price. Well, you're putting it off longer. I'm not putting it off longer. I'm going to save $1,000 to the taxpayers of this town. And how are you going to do that? Because that's not a 12-hour job. This, this estimate is based on lead and oakum for every joint. We don't and he had a discussion about that, too. So you, you can talk to him further. Both, I spoke with both Fran and Robert yesterday. He doesn't need the lead and oakum. It can all be brackets. Well. But it has to be cast iron. Because I had asked him if we could do ABS temporarily, which would save even more money. It's probably going to save you about 300 bucks. He's not going to let us do it, so it's smooth. You need about 10, 15 feet of cast iron. It's about $105 a 10-foot section. To pay $2,400, $2,600 for that job is just, I, I don't know. Do you have any idea what a plumbing <clears throat> prevail wage 
wages that they're going to pay. It's, this isn't a prevailing wage job. Yeah, it is. It's not. He's a self-employed contractor that's coming in for under an amount. If he has a gentleman working with him and it's not an owner-operator, it's a prevailing wage that he's going to pay. Any other issues on this bathroom? Uh, yeah, I haven't high. resolved my HUD-5 question yet. Yeah, we, I... I'd be just as concerned as when the plumbing plugs up the next time what that cost us as it did a week ago. Bruce, this, this town hall, Steve. you've been you've been here longer than I, anybody probably in this room has in this mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. First day I came in it was plugged. It had nothing yeah, to do right. with a set with a septic. No, no, no. It had the, the, everything to do with that bathroom way down there to the drain way right. down there. Right. That's what it is. If we don't get a plumbing in here, the chance is We'll hire a cleaning aid, somebody to come in, clean the pipes out again. That's throwing money away, Steve. We're working on it, Bruce. Yeah, I know. But this I tell you what, if it goes two weeks and you get to hire the the the, the agent, the uh, like Slim Sewer, who hired last week to clean out the pipes, we throw the money away again. What did that cost him? If I was guessing, it's five hundred. I don't know what it costs. Thank you, your committee. You must know your board. What did it cost us to have It's in the expense form. And we threw that money away. It's exactly what we did. If we'd had it plugged up, if we had the, the plumbing hooked up, that would never happen. Is there a need for a motion before the floor? I'm not, I'm not dealing with this right now. We're going to deal with another, another. I'd like to urge you Steve. to deal with it now. Mr. Uh, from chair. a board of health perspective. Mr. Correct. Mr. Would, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. You're not going to entertain a motion not right from now, anybody? No, not right now. It's going to So it's run by one, one man right now, one person. It, it's the chairman of this committee. Do you have any other issues before this board as a department head, Mr. Clark? Oh, yeah, I got so lots. So, go. Let's go. I got lots. Let's go. No, no, no. This, this is the whole department head. This isn't the department. Just I'm myself. focusing with you because you have the majority of the issues. I'm still talking about the restroom. Yes, I am. Okay. What else? What else? You started off with this here, yes. then it snowballed to five other things. No, it's the restroom. We're still on. Plumbing and restroom. That's what, what else, it is. What else would you like? I've never talked about anything else here today. What else would you like this new restroom? I'd like to know when the plumbing's going to be hooked up. Because as, I can't as, see. I, as soon as I can work out the details with Mr. White. What do the other two selectmen have to say about it? What do the other two selectmen have to say about it? We need a motion before the floor. You do, and I want to make one suggestion, and this is how I'm I. I'm asking the chairman, do we need a motion? It, it, has, it has to be structured, and I'm not ready to structure that. When, based, when are you prepared to structure Like I stated on the other, number four. Oh, okay, I, I had no intention of avoiding this conversation at all. I've been working pretty hard. Regardless if it's on the phone or not, I'm pretty offended at that, Bruce. I work my butt off in this town, and phone or not, I it take be care of it. It doesn't bother me. Eh? It doesn't bother me, and it doesn't bother you. We can <laughs> we can do this all day, Bruce. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a father like you. I'm all set. So can I can I make a suggestion? Talk? Correct. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Here's what I would suggest: somebody make a motion to spend up to $2,600 to get that septic system tied into that bathroom ASAP. Any other department heads have an issue? I don't know. Um, I have a question Senate about head. Sawmill Pond. Yep. Do we have a definite answer on whether we should hire whether the selectmen are going to hire somebody, what we're going to do as far as Sawmill Pond goes. I would leave this, to, I thought Clarence was working with you in regards to that. We were supposed to get some information back and we were supposed to notify the, did we ever get the information back? We haven't gotten any further information. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing reports, you know, kind of finish up reports. I need a, an answer on, are we going to look at reducing the size of the pond what are we going to do as far as the outlet gate goes on the dam? Well, I think that the, the conclusion I think we reached, though no, no holes were made by this board, what was reached, and again, this was a conversation between you, Bruce, and I, is that we were going to be receiving from the state what, what it would look like by reducing the level of the of pond. And that, that we felt, and again, I say not being individually, but we mutually felt that that was the best strategy for the task to reduce the level. And what we needed to do was to notify the abutters to make sure that they were comfortable with that conclusion because, again, it would be in the best interest of the town. But before we were notified, them, we wanted to make sure we had something that we could show them to say what it would look like under that set of circumstances. 
but so do we want to go ahead with hiring an engineering firm to determine how much we would have to shrink the pond to lower, you know, to reduce the size of it? I think that, that would be, it would be prudent to, be, to do that. I, just, that, yeah, that's, I, I guess that's my question. I'd have to defer to you as, as far as, you know, what that timing might be. Is, is that something we want to do fairly soon? I would think so, because again, I think we are under some sort of gut as far as doing something. I think so too. That's we got, we got four years to do something. We got four years to do something. Again, what? We're waiting for this feedback from the state, so maybe we could turn around well, and poke them a little bit to get this. Miss Beth Lambert did send us three or four photos. They're not. One project. Yeah. It's, uh, I can, if you if you want, I'll reach out to Beth again and see if we can get. If there's anything else. Anything else. I mean, if that's what she's given us, then that's what we use. That's that's all phone. we have gotten, and it's been months. Yeah. So yeah. It, I, yeah. Could then let's back to steps. If Cindy could reach out to her to say, okay. is there anything else that, that we need from a, what we're trying to do is demonstrate to the residents of the town and, and those around that area if this thing would not deteriorate their property values, those kinds of things. And if we can then show them that, whether it's this correspondence or another one, hopefully it's another one that these photographs weren't that accurate and good. So we can then have the, the public hearing that we talked about. And then with that, that would then put in, in motion that we didn't have negative feedback, or at least it would seem to be positive when they were forward. We would then take from that to then hire the engineer necessary to say, and this is what it would what it would be to do what we're talking about doing. Well, that's, that's exactly what we talked about the last time we talked about it. Yep. But if we have four years, you might want to, with the advisory chair here, implement that into the budget for next year. So we well, can develop a plan we, more. We have the money in that Dam and Seawall loan account still. I'm just wondering How if How much we, is left? Quite a bit. $50,000, $60,000. There's, yeah, there's at least I'm going to say at least eighty thousand off the yeah, top of that. That from one hundred and seventy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the money is there. The, the money is there, and so that was the reason for my question. Do we want to go ahead with Lennart? We have Lennart hired right now to do our closeout reports on the work that we did on the bank stabilization. Do we want to hire Lennart to go ahead and determine how much we would have to reduce the size of Mill Pond? To get us below. So the state won't tell us that. No, no. the state can't. They, it's something we have to hire an engineer for. And, and Lenard is preferred. And Lenard is who we're working with right now, and who has done the majority. So the, the time. The state has right. The state has made the suggestion to look into that end of it, so we get away from a earth and dam situation. So, yeah. My my knee jerk, thinking out loud, is it would kind of suit as a, a public hearing bring an article forward on a town meeting where people can come out and vote and say, yeah, you know, I want to have a research team come out, engineer team come out, and determine if reducing that. Do we need an article? I don't think we do, based on Cindy's comment, yeah. but I think it would be prudent to but, put an article if we have four years. But didn't we also put away money in uh, our uh, 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 didn't we pass an article to do the money over there for um, that money's all been spent. All, all of that all that spent. Oh. That was for the initial engineering, I think. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The, I guess my question is we have Lennard engaged right now. Do we want to And that would give us the information for Correct. If we were to put an article forward. Yeah, would it be prudent to have them come out now? Yeah, but it's gonna spend money what if the town doesn't want to reduce it? Why don't we say it? Because, because the, point of the, the point of the survey is to reduce it, correct? The yes. The yes. point of the survey is to know what the effects are going to be if we reduce it. Right. Yeah. So I can't, no one can tell you what the pond's going to look like until an engineer determines the depth of the water. If you lower the water a foot, how much land mass is gained. I'd rather have the townspeople say, I want to spend money to reduce that pond. Because that's basically what you're asking the long. It's, it's what's, our, what's our next step? That's what I'm asking. If we keep, obviously, it has to be an engineer because we have to do something. Yeah, something has to be designed. So are we going to catch 22? Let's make sure. It is. It is. It's kind of a it is. Do you, do you want to hold a, a public hearing and see what the residents, the, the, the abutters, have to say? That's where we were headed first. And 
now we've kind of talked ourselves into going for the town. I, I think it's, I, I really think that we are. Both ways you're going before the town. Okay. But I, I think you'd have more of a turnout when there's money involved. Yeah. Right. But going before a town meeting without good information says that there was no risk. Well, I don't think we're going to have any information regardless of public hearing or town meeting because, like Bruce says, we're, it's just high in the sky. A, a public hearing isn't going to cost us. I mean, you, know, you send a notice out to the abutters, you explain to them the situation, get them interested in it, maybe they'll be involved in it. Do we have time and, and to then, do both? And then the exact numbers may have to, we need, might need number, uh, money to, to go forward, but. And, and again, I think that that's, we get back to our original strategy of having some pictures to say this is typically what it would look like before going off to the engineer. That was our original strategy to make sure we had a group of people that, again, the residents themselves, that felt comfortable with what we were talking about. Because from a cost perspective, and, Inspecting dams over long periods of time costs lots of money. Plus, if you have to do something with that dam, it's even a bunch more money. Where the reduction of the dam height, whether or, whether or not it's whatever it is, would be far and away more cost effective for the town in the long run. So, we talk ourselves back into the original structure. So, should we do, do we have time to do both? Can we do a we do. hearing? Well, but like Clara said, is, is pictures, and we discussed that the last time we talked about yes. it. Was well, we have those those few pictures from Beth Lambert, so, so we have something. So and maybe she can produce more? She sent us, I, like Bruce said, we haven't heard from her in several months, so I'm guessing that what she sent us is what we're going to get. And I'd rather, can, I'd rather see it as an article as opposed to using the money for the law. Because if the townspeople don't want it, then... So could we do the hearing with the abutters? Or yeah. Public yeah. hearing is open. Hearing the so, so um, invite the abutters, and then does probably, it, if we do it soon. Month before the town meeting. Well, if we do it soon, and then we'd have time to know whether we need to put an article on. And then Mike could probably do a robocall, you know, to let the people know, you know, that we are having a hearing. I like Clarence's idea of physically going and knocking on the doors, because I think you volunteered for that, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, at least send letters to those doors. Well, the abutters should be a different notification. Yeah, the abutters. They should be. Exactly. So, so uh, given this, let's let's talk ourselves back into the strategy. The strategy is Cindy's going to ask one more time, right or wrong. We then set up a public hearing. I'm talking. I'm thinking the middle of March is probably the time. What's our timing on the articles? First of April. April. Dave, oh. okay, do you remember? Hey, I got a few. Exactly. <laughs> Timing of the articles for the town meeting. What do they do? I got April 5th on the brain. Well, as soon as, as soon as you can. It's oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. What was the drop date? We, we set a date. We did. We set a date. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. It was in March. It's March. It's back in March. No, 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 no. It's in April. Well, regardless, we can work on it and get it to you. Okay. Okay. All right, so can I keep here. going with my list? Um, oh, I have can I just talk more about the dam for a second? Sure. I have Clarence. the articles. Excuse me for one sec. Uh, we have the articles in the end by uh, 5 p.m. on April 26th. Okay. So, yeah. so plenty of time. Good. Do you want to send, should we just send letters out to the abutters and have them meet us here someday? Yes. Just, in, in, it's not the public hearing, it's a sit down. Yep. And then again, we can get some better pictures or something to be able to describe what we're talking about. So I think that that's the key. The website for the town hall. They might not be able, all be able to meet at the same time, but we, can, we can meet their needs. But, but again, I want to build a, a group of people that believe in what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to go forward. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm and if, and if we uh, I think that's the stuff don't have them, um, then it's a surprise that it's not it's going on. We good, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. Cindy. Cindy. Yeah. Cindy's list. Um, Bruce, Bruce had the question. Final site visit for Mill Street with FEMA and MEMA is scheduled for March 22nd, 10.30 a.m. If anybody from the select board would like to join us. Could we again? March 22nd, 10.30 a.m. I imagine we'll start at the highway garage and walk down to the culvert. Um, financial policy. I know that at one of the department head meetings, 
you said that that had been approved. Could I get, I've never gotten a copy of Press, the financial policy. You're supposed to send those out. Um, so could we, could I get a copy of that? Well, But there, so before before you leave, can you ask Karen to print you up a packet? Yes, we can. Sorry. I got a quick question. Who's paying for all the late fees on bills that we're getting late fees on? What are you guys do? Bills not being paid on time. Yeah, we're we're starting to see finance charges coming we back at them us. On time, but we're getting finance. I was only aware of one bill that wasn't paid. Uh, we just got one yesterday with a finance charge. And I did, I did talk the company into absorbing that finance charge, but I'm not sure I'll be able to do that with all of them. Who are they? That was uh, Phil, I think, T.H. Hill. Yeah, something like that. Um, I lose track. It, it's, we submit the bills on time. For some reason or other, they're getting held up here. She gave you a reason? There was one back here a while ago, process. over a month went by with bills not being paid. We seem to be having a, a disconnect on this end on some of our bills. So far I haven't had to pay a finance charge. But Are you communicating with the accountant or, and getting nowhere? She said she's worked, she's, you know, doing her best, doing the best she can. Yeah, I don't get it. The, the only thing I can think of is that Departments contact the board of selectmen through this ministry of assistance so we can. I'm hoping that now that she's got a clerk, maybe things will turn around. Yeah. You know, we can. Has it just been recent because of the health? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think so. What, but when she is home, I know she is working. So yeah, I don't understand why some of these bills aren't getting paid on time. Well, we, got a, we got a warrant in there um, that has, has to be signed, and we, I'll, look, I'll look through it and see if. Look at the electric bills. Yeah, the electric, electric bills, bills are, are the biggest ones. Were ones that were finance charter. Yeah, charter and charter is another one. That being late fees. On those them. are bills that I don't submit. Um, charter bills. They come up here to the town hall. So who have you who have you talked to to get those charges taken off? Usually, I call a company directly. Um, that's why I talked to a TH Hill so, yesterday. So charter and national grid. Yes. Those are two that I'll have, particularly I'll have Karen uh, reach out to them today and see if they can waive those fees. I'm Most assuming it's just one when it's one time. Yeah. Well, generally, we don't pay late fees because we're a municipality. Or at least that's what Betty told me before. So right. we've never <laughs> been on That's what she tells me, but you tell a company that. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, right. I don't want her to use that as an excuse. <laughs> okay, pretty hard not to pay when we charge it. You can plead once in a while and get them to take them off. But yeah. Well, we've all been there in life. Um, the, uh, my other question is um, mowing of grass. I'm, I'm wondering if, and this is my question, this is not Herb's question. Um, will the selectmen support, again this year, a seasonal employee for the highway department so that we can get the grass in I, town to mowed? To be honest with you, I'd, I'd like to see, and I, I know Mike has his brothers, and maybe it can be the person down at the cemetery that mows the whole town. Because I know the rec, rec committee is... Correct. The rec committee is turning Lewis Field yeah. over to us. Yeah. Um, I don't believe the person at the cemetery can do it because he has another job. He works. Plus he has a regular and job and then he works time. at the transfer station. Because we had talked a couple of years ago with mowing the whole thing in and Mike's argument was that he doesn't want somebody going down and knocking over headstones, which is a valid argument. Huh? Regarding, but the um, but I think we would end up paying overtime if it were the person who works. At You're the not going to have one one individual center. dedicated to doing that. It's just not going to happen. It's I to do well, all that the cemetery and the rest of the town that he's going to have. The seasonal worker can take care of everything, mowing wise plus help you out throughout the season. Correct. You guys had a guy last year for about what 900 hours. You had a seasonal employee. Yeah, or probably. something like that. Probably. Well, that we worked out. It's in the budget now. Why don't you just do that? I, well, because I, I, I we had a volunteer mowing the common for you all last year. But so it, it, just, was, it, has, it has to be vented with the advisory committee too, because it's going to snowball. The Lewis Field is going to be added into it now, which it wasn't ever. 
Yep. Well, there's about two thousand dollars allocated for that for that job on an annual basis. The Lewis Field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mind you, that thirty-five hundred bucks in that account right now. Just right. take into consideration that it was like an eleven dollar and thirty cent an hour employee wage on oh, that. That ain't gonna happen. So you better consider that when you take take that job if you all are gonna do that. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. it takes about approximately a day a week to get everything in town mowed in the height of the grass season. Day per week? Yeah. Well, we have, we have the volunteer that's doing the common as well. Do we can. But you, you, you don't know if you're going to have that I know. I know. So, every so, year. So, so, answer to your question, I'm not opposed to it. I think okay. the, that, that was my question. Is, I'm, not, I'm just, not opposed to hiring. But it, it has to be vented with the advisory committee. Okay, yeah, I think that that was the strategy. Yeah. 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 Almost a day by itself. Yeah. Is, is there any uh, anybody seeking a tax reduction through the assessor's office that might be qualified to? I don't think so. No. I think they're all clerical. No. They're, they're all clerical. Do we have a veteran? A male veteran? I don't think so. Neither one of them. No. We had two. Oh, well, regardless, we, we, like Mike says, we, we can't depend on volunteers to keep it. Well, that would be volunteer work, though. What, mowing? No, with the assessor, through the assessor's office. It, it's a commitment right to work, now. isn't it? Right. I understand. Right. But it's not volunteer. Um, you, mean, you mean it's on the senior write-off program? Right. Yes. They, they yeah, we already have, people. we have two who are doing like clerical and we, I don't think we even had any veterans. For the record, that's working out. Hmm? That is working out really good. We heard she's, we heard she's, we heard she's yeah. off. She's off. Yeah. She is a kid working with me. And then my other question was uh, regarding a revolving account and the vacant properties. And Bruce, can you kind of? Yeah, uh, with this, um, new program through the Attorney General's office about vacant properties, abandoned properties. Is there any way we could use some of the um, the funding we use to hire engineers for the CDBG grants? Remember, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an account on the selectman's uh, power. Could we use some of those funds to pay for the engineers that would not engineers, inspectors. inspectors that would be involved with this Attorney General's uh, abandoned properties program. Instead of tapping the Board of Health to pay for the housing inspector, because you're looking at probably two housing inspections per property, and then time for them to write up and We were inspected by that group and there was a fee for it, and we just had to show up ten properties. So the, the, fee, the fee is not because we have to inspect the property and provide that paperwork. Well, I got, I got a different, Kermit spoke directly with the AG's office regarding that, okay. and he told me that just call us, we'll go out, you pick out the properties, we'll do the inspection. But you sat at the meeting, didn't you? I did. And, it, and, and if it boils down to, yes, this property is eligible, then we have, then to, we have to inspect it. So, okay. So approximately $100 per property. Uh, $40 if it's two house. inspections, so you're looking at about 80 bucks per. And then um, paperwork time. Yeah, so you're looking at 800 bucks. How much? If we pick out, if if we pick out 10 property. properties. Oh, oh okay. I, 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 but not likely for home. Look, because their budget is limited, yeah. they're probably going to just pick a couple. Because they're 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth that they're dealing with. I don't think they would do up to 10 on their own. They'd only just go with a couple. Is that what they said? They said 10. They said up to 10. Well, they, we, we can do as many as we'd like. We, Kermit had sent them, the, or Peter had sent them the list, and they said, look, you know, just do 10. It's more palatable. Correct. Well, that's what they there. stated at the meeting. 10 was their number to like the word. Now, does the Board of Health agree with this, Mike? So I'm just wondering if the Board of, A, number one, if the Board of Health wants to afford out of their housing inspection budget to do this if they can afford to. We can't right now. We're, we're looking right. at uh, a net loss this year possibly because of uh, some of the classes that were taken uh, by the board members and um, court cases that are ongoing. So. so is there money in that account that we could use to pay the housing inspector to move forward on these vacant properties? That's my question. So Mike, do we need the inspections to move forward? 
Well, it's going to be further down the road. Eventually we will if there's a determination by the AG's office that these 10 properties that are chosen by us and these uh, two individuals uh, are go, then yeah, they'll... So it has to be... A they'll say it meets the criteria. When they say it meets the criteria, then we got to have our Board of Health inspector go out and... The word was before it hits the judge's desk, yes. the inspections must be completed. And they charge $80 an in inspection? No, $40. $40. And it's, you know, if there's two, two, what, what, what are you thinking, two inspections? I think probably two inspections for each property, plus time, writing up paperwork. So I'm saying ballpark number of $100 per property. Um, you have the houses that we put in this receivership program have to not meet the standards of the state sanitary code, right? Like, they have to right. be in violation. That's they have to be the in vast violation. majority of the choices that were made were not in, they, they weren't habitated. Nobody lives in them and the water's shut off. That's our primary list. A lot of them are bank owned. And so the AG's office said that the bank owned ones are the easiest ones because the banks work towards a solution faster than maybe a property owner. So. Well, two things. If there's money in an account that we can use, obviously moving forward to get properties well, yeah, it is, it is. but at the, at the same time, if it's not there, it, it would have to be an article. But it almost sounds like it's going to be a tight race between the town meeting and the Republican guy, except the properties are submitted. Right. Well, we have to look. We have to look to see if there's an account. But when we discussed this, the onus was on the board of health to meet with the seven individuals, and I guess they're meeting with you next month. Yeah, we, we met and, and discussed it briefly, and our, object, our idea was, well, okay, let's do some drive-bys on some of these properties. We'll submit the 10 and then roll with it. The way the process works, the Attorney General's office will accept whatever you look about visually and say, okay, that house is eligible, this house is eligible. We'll send them a letter. That may be all it takes. We don't have to get involved with inspectors. Right. right. But when they don't react positively to a letter sent out, now we get the inspector, now we get the courts involved. That's mm -hmm. all. And we're talking a thousand bucks. Well, for if, 10 homes, if, right. If yes. the maximum, so we're talking right. less than a thousand dollars. I mean, it's, it's, let's see if we have it here or wherever. But I, did I just hear correctly that the program that Kermit and Peter presented to us, if that, if those fall with them, then we'd have to pursue it? They're not going to deal with it anymore? No, no, no. The Attorney General's office pursues it. All the way. It they, takes it the off our firm. shelf. Yes. They're, the, they're the legal firm all I, the way. I wouldn't be willing to follow a program that if we get next from the state that we'd have to pursue it after. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is, should we have to have an inspection? That's yes. correct. Now, are any of these properties a tax title? Uh, well, if they bank on, the bank's paying the they, taxes. They can't be in tax title. Right. They can be delinquent on taxes. But it's really the state sanitary code that's driving this whole thing. They have to fail a state sanitary code inspection. Because I noticed. I looked at the list quick, but it didn't seem to be a many enticing. There wasn't many that I saw. But I noticed, though, some of the ones that you, when we had gotten the email, and you, I looked at them, some of them, the taxes are paid on these pro some of the mm -hmm. properties. That's okay. Most of them are. If the bank will close on them. No, I mean, even no, there's, there's owners here themselves that are yeah. paying the taxes yeah. on them. And, and those owners, oh, yeah. lots of times, a letter from the Attorney General is going to get a lot more attention than a letter from Brookfield's Board of Health. Okay. I think that's the end of my questions. Mike? Um, over the next three to five years, the state's going to replace our radio system, which means all our current radios no longer work, so we have to start replacing them. I spoke to Dave about it a week ago, maybe, or something like that. And then I was going to be putting forward most likely an article on um, the annual town meeting. It costs between four thousand five hundred and four thousand eight hundred to replace each one of the portables, the radios and the cruisers, plus our two base radios at the station. Um, the reason why I'm asking, bringing it up today, is because I just got an email from Lieutenant Landine from Hardwick, who's been in contact with Senator Gobi, and. Um, in the next couple of weeks or so, she'll be sending letters to selectmen in the area, just seeing if they have any money projects that they would like her to support. So I'm asking you guys if you would support this project. They're looking at a total of uh, 
920,000 yeah, 920, to uh, replace radios for all the 10 towns. Through a grant? Through a, yeah. Uh, so I have a little bit of information on it um, that I can give to you. If you guys, if you does send a letter, if you could just put that uh, project as, as something you would urge her to support. Well, I'm going to go further. Um, I'm going to um, ask the administrative assistant uh, through the chair to send a letter to Senator Govey supporting the initiative to fund said project. Yeah, because yeah. if, if we don't get the money, we're, we're going to have to pay for it out of our pocket. And this is, this says over the next five years, that's the first time on my heard. I thought it was three years that they were going to have to get all these radios replaced. Um, so my plan is regardless of go forward with articles each year for the next three years just to do small increments to replace some radios at a time rather than one big hit. All right, so we'll send that email out for that. If you want to copy of the email, I can just give it to you so you have a little bit of information on it. What, what, what's the reason why they go to They're going to digital radios, so these radios will not work. And is that, that, that going to control? Is that going to be fire as well? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't think anything about fire. Uh, you know, just, just to let you know, when they start doing all this, it snowballs right down the line to every so department. Probably will be at and some I, point. I think Peter right. replaced some radios too, didn't he, in a, a few years ago? Yeah. Well, yeah we, we did too. We did too. With we them. got a grant and replaced but all that the But that was a digital wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, I think that's coming for everyone along the lines. Awesome. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I wouldn't yeah. go digital, but that's besides the point because I think they have no problems with the digital. We, we got a grant for, we have some digital, my portable, and there's four other portables on the department that will continue working because we, uh, Lieutenant Landine did secure a grant previously for the, for the 10 towns out of C8, and we got new portables. So these will still work. So we'll have five working portables, but we need probably about anywhere from eight to 10 more portables, plus the four cruiser radios and the two base radios is what we need to replace. So. Anything else? Uh, that's all I have. Yeah, I, I have one for Mike, if we could, while we're still here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Mr. Blaze has a correspondence in. Yes. Uh, do we, I, I, I see you as the kind of lead dog on that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the only thing I can ask, and I, I, he, he called me last week and told me Sharon has a contact number that I can get a hold of Doug and talk to him. I told him it's going to be a little bit because I've kind of been busy and he was okay with it. So maybe after the meeting, Sharon can give me the contact, and I'll get a hold of him probably next week. So you've got the ball for now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he knows it. But it's, but but I don't know if he does know because it's been an ongoing issue. We've been communicating. He does with, with him he, consistently. Because every time he talks to me, I tell him, "Listen, I'll, take, I'll do my best." I said, "I can't promise anything." If he says he's not moving those cars. He's not moving those cars. But you, you can only enforce what the bylaws state. Right. Exactly. I, I told him to go to the bylaw committee if the bylaws need to be changed and work with them. He went to the planning board instead, saying you need to enforce this, and they did the right thing and said, you know, you got to, you got to get changed. It's not us. It's you know, the selectmen. And us, the selectmen, it's a bylaw committee. Well, I, and I said, and if he's got a real problem, that he can, as a citizen of this town, offer an amendment or a, an article and a bylaw recommendation. Uh, but again, I think we, we we start with the chief working to see if we can amiably resolve this thing, and if we can't, then and there needs to be a, a bylaw change. Then he's just looking to have a move across the other side of the parking lot for all he cares. Well, he's, he's looking to have the bylaw enforced. And that, that's where Nick comes in and Nick passes the buck to you because right. you're the enforcement. And officer. technically, the guy has a license for a business. Am I not correct? So my hands are tied. And all so I can do is just ask him if he'd be willing to work with the neighbors. He, he's within the rights of the bylaws. That's correct. And all I'm saying is right. that where it is, and he respects that, is that Mike's going to give this one last try. Yep. And then if the, if there needed to be a bylaw, Yep. Then he can pursue it himself personally. And you know, like I said, it was either it was maybe the beginning of this week or at the end of last week that he called me and told me, Sharon will have something for me. So. Um, I'm speaking as chair of the planning board. Um, Mr. Blaze's <coughs> accusation was in the nature of that the cars in question are junk cars. And I knew nothing about which cars he's talking about. I've not been to the site, none of the board had. And what we told him was that the, the determination of whether or not they were junk cars would be up to the chief, according to the bylaw. Um, well, and if they were junk cars, then perhaps something could be done. But if not, I I can't determine whether or not they're junk cars. I think the whole 
going back to when this bylaw was talked about before, the whole reason why it was placed upon the police department was because we're the only ones that can find out whether or not they're registered or unregistered. I can't tell you what a junk car is or not. Those cars don't run. Is that junk? Junk to me, not, not junk to Doug. He, he, he could be selling them, he could be doing something, so I'm not about to label something something. But that's why it's in the responsibility of the police department, because we have the ability to look up and see if those cars are registered. Anyone driving by can tell those cars aren't registered, and they don't work. So I, I can't label them. So maybe he has a business to have those types of cars. If he maybe, wants to repair them and sell them. Maybe in the discussion, if you can just bring them into the garage that's unoccupied. Yeah, no, I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him. Um, but like I said, I, it was tough. I didn't have a contact number for him. He, he's never there because he's trying to get rid of the business. But I'll, I'll talk with Sharon and give me a contact. And, and if I can add one more thing, the planning board did invite Mr. Blaze to participate in talks about amending the bylaw to make it more explicit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've directed him to do from yeah. the way yeah. to go. Move on. Um, but the selectman's office should have contact information because he did register for it was a class two license. He's got a license to sell. I, I'll get it from, from either. I don't care. Anything else? I got a question. Yeah. When are we officially going to be stop paying on the police station? We're going to be out of it by the end of February. The end of February is the latest. Yeah. Is that is that the is that the set date? Yeah. And then yeah. we're all, we're all done making payments. We yeah we have at least through that through February 29th. And then okay. So and I'm doing my best to get everything out of there. There's still quite a bit that quite a bit of work that needs to be done, but I'm going to do everything I can to get everything out of it. So you'll be out by the end of the month. I'm going to try. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do my best. That's it. I mean, I, I don't want to promise something and, and then, you know, so, but yeah, we're working on it. We have a couple plans. Just so, because if we, if, we, if we stay another week or a few days beyond February, then we have to be obligated to pay another month is what I'm getting at. Well, I don't know how that would work. It's, we don't have a lease after February, so that would probably be up to Dave and the town to yeah, okay. work something out. But he's going to be all set by February 29th. Okay. You don't seem too assured there, Mike. No, I just, I just <laughs> want to promise something that I can't yeah. Yeah. Like, guarantee. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm going to do everything in my power to get the department head. You know? What? Do you have anything as a department head? No. Brenda? No more? Yes. Well, I, I, have I do. I have one for Brenda before we leave. How are we doing with those that did not receive tax bills? Are we on track that we have money in the bank? I believe we're on track. Anybody that did not receive a tax bill, I waived any interest, and it did seem to be one part of the alphabet, so I don't know if it was my computer, if it was the mail delivery, or I didn't <coughs> lost in transit, it was just a bulk, I don't know. It was know. the lock at the end. Yes. Okay. So that, that's, so. But people also, anybody that owns real estate understands it's their responsibility to get their bill, so if they didn't receive a bill, it's not even a valid excuse to not pay a bill. Everybody knows that if they own property, they have to pay tax bills. Well, in my, my particular case is I didn't receive the tax bill. <laughs> there <laughs> there we go. Go. I was fortunate well, 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 that Mike did a robocall and yeah. said, oh, by the way, the taxes were too. And right. I asked my wife and we call and had this. email and fax someone, resend exactly. it, whatever. That's, so, I like that call, Mike. That was good. Thanks. That was a good idea. It was very helpful. Yes. Thank Sir, you. had a question? Yeah, did you get the email that Cindy sent up about the snow and ice cup? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Campground. Are we going to seek uh, an article for some funding, or is how's the grant coming, or just March 9th we hear, and so the article for the funding has already been passed at town meeting, so it's a matter. No, of the article for funding for cleanup. Oh. Uh, does 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 the article does the grant you applied for will that well, that fund, okay. So we still need to think about cleanup money. So, okay, so I will then defer to you, Bruce. I got a suggestion. Yeah, well, do we, do we have to transfer money to the Board of Health? Not or, yet, but... The, uh, the way it's set up right now, through, through their vote and through our vote, yep. was that the Board of Health was going to pay through their account, and whatever it came to, we would deficit spend at the end transferring funds. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, there'll be money where we could transfer it so we won't need our Do funds. Oh. That's my belief, because it's always... No, no, I mean, we have more to clean up. Yes, yeah, so now... Oh, uh, for the future? I thought you were talking about what's expended now. Yeah, I was just trying to get that off the table. So what, what's been expended now is good. 
We still have. Well, we still have to clean it up at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. For our the grand transaction. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's put that. We have a plan. So now what, what we've learned is we have probably one more shot at what we're talking. That we did this thirty-five hundred dollars for the remember? buildings. Yes. To yeah. the, to do the remainder of the buildings mm -hmm. was like one more time of what we just did. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Bruce? What is just did? It we was, need. We're was, talking seven, eight thousand dollars more. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's, okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, just it is. calibrating. Yeah, so, it is. It so is. we're dealing with seven or eight thousand dollars. So we got uh, the thirty-five hundred took down two buildings and uh, and a little bit of cleanup work. Because okay. one building just had so much trash. In it. Excuse me. Because one of the buildings had so much trash in it, right? They all they they they're loaded. The they're they're all that, that old office was horrible. I don't yeah. Know. And we have uh, another trailer that's very large. It's got a full uh, a full Addition. expansion off of it. Addition off it with a full deck. The the, the worst one. Over by Pine Lane has a, another addition with a full deck. The decks kill you. Doesn't they don't crunch, you know? But but when we send a dumpster out, it's overloaded for what they give you, which is good because we're not paying for an empty dumpster to leave. But they're full when they leave, you know. Um, so here, here's the options. So if you're now talking, let's say eight thousand dollars to finish the cleanup job. Yeah. So what happens is we're getting this first. We pray we get the first grant, which is a planning grant to put a plan in place. There are two now. Once you kind of pass that threshold, there are two other buckets of money that you can then approach for. Mm -hmm. And so in either of those uh, buckets, they wouldn't back accept cleanup. It would be a 50% match and that sort of thing. So it would be $4,000 we would have to go after it rather than eight. Unfortunately, it doesn't, their, their cycles are it's a year from now, yeah. March. So we I, have to go out. So yeah. the, the real question then becomes whether or not we take and have an article for, I, I would say, the eight thousand dollars to finish the camp. Well, camp I would, place. I would say we have to. We have the attorney general's office stepping in to help us clean up abandoned properties. This is why. And we're not taking care of our own. I think we have to. Okay. With that being said, I'd like to bring up the seventeen thousand dollars that. Uh, was allocated for the grants. Yep. March date, March 9th is the last date that we're looking at of whether we got approval or not? Yeah, they, they have the vote that day. Okay, so in the event that it isn't approved, we've still got money in that account that hasn't been expended. That would be another way to approach it. Yeah, and that's going to be my suggestion. Money in the event that we are denied, how much money has been expended out of the 17,000? Okay. Zero. But it can't be. And if, we, and if we fail on the March 9th and don't get the grant, we still have 17,000? Only to use for the grant, though. We can't use Not it. Not a problem. I got the solution. What you do is you're going to take that 17K, you're going to do a transfer into a new account called the campground cleanup account. Right. Let's not raise and appropriate any more money for this in the event that this gets denied. Oh, no, right. We will yeah. use that money. That's how we're going to roll on right. that, I think. I think that's so, however, I'm grateful. That well, that, that's that's good. Let's keep our thoughts uh, hopeful. Oh, but uh, uh, there's a cynical side too. Yeah. One other contentious topic: the yellow sign. Does anybody agree or disagree that the language on the sign is inappropriate for the town of Brookfield? I agree. I, I wasn't proud of what's up there now. That's what I mean. Yeah. I got a few phone calls and when I drove past it. And yeah, you got them on the board in the town of Brookfield. I would want to explain it to my elementary school. What well, that I, 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 had a, I had my 11 year old in the truck yesterday, and my 15 year old nephew in the truck yesterday asked me what it meant. Yeah, it was, it was I mean, what, what, what are we as a town supposed to do about it? To me, I, I, I would just. I don't know, you're talking to the wrong guy, I think. From no, I'm talking to everybody. From, you know? where, from where you want to go, I, I, I believe in freedom of speech. Um, I think that issue has been dragged out and kicked down the road several times. It's legal. Um, mm -hmm. My name's never, my name has been on there, but it's been on the positive. Do, do we, do we, do we promote uh, freedom of speech? No, the person who wishes to place this on his yellow sign. By allowing him to serve on boards in the community. Exactly. Yeah. I, I have no problem with that. You don't? No. Okay. Well, maybe you should talk to him. I have tried. Bruce, maybe you should talk to him. I have tried. It's on camera. 
but it's in regards to freedom of speech, my grandfather died for that. No, I, and I agree with you, Steve. I do. I do. Is it appropriate? That's the is it appropriate? That's what's, up there, what's up there now is not, a, is not appropriate. And we have him in the room. I'd ask Dave if he could take that off the side. It would be a favor to me. <clears throat> we'll take it under advisement. Thank you, sir. I saw Herbie trying to leave, and I just go, if he has to go somewhere, then I would ask to move up the wood policy so we can have a conversation about wood policy while he's still in the room. Are you all set? I'm all set, thank you. Um, item number three, wood policy. Go all sign number three. All right, Herbie. First of all, I want to, in the citizen article, I want this one citizen article. I want to encourage people to pick up the so they can be safe in this little town. Yeah. So the property owner is responsible for the wood that is there. Most of the, If the town is doing the tree removal, usually we take and try to talk to the property owners to find out if they want the wood. Right. If they don't want the wood, somebody else on the street may want the wood. We'll just. We try to get it picked up and get it out of there as soon as possible. Totally. We cut down a tree earlier this year. I knew I was going to get back until springtime anyways to pick it up because I'm not going to take and have something happen to the trucks or whatever in between yep. with the winter and everything. So, so, so the, the, my idea of suggesting a person sees wood along the side of the road to then talk to the property owner if they would like to take advantage of the wood. A lot of times they end up seeing us and they ask, and basically, I tell them that the property owner don't want it. It's first come, first serve. Right. So, so should I drive them towards you first, or should I drive them towards the property owner first? Right now, I I can't say. I'm not in, I'm not in charge of the tree stuff. Okay, Bill right. Davis is. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Stender. According to this policy, Bill Stender. Right. The, the tree, yeah, the tree will be But at the same time, we have some good trees in the road. Mm -hmm. and, and again, he wants to be part of this, and he's not here this morning, so yeah, I will correspond with him directly. But the, the, you would, at the end of the day, you're going to end up picking up the stuff that's sitting there. Am I correct? It sure heck sounds like it. It's, well, so it's not a cost to the town. Let's take a step back. Okay. The, the tree warden is the town. Mm -hmm. The highway department is the town. Right. There's been several requests to work in conjunction with each other to save the town money. So the tree warden doesn't have to go out to an independent contractor to take care of this issue. And exactly. the tree warden is not doing that. Is not and doing hopefully that. he sees it on camera. Doing what? Working with the town. Well, i.e. you? Yeah, because he wants to go off of bids. What did that tell you last time when he was here? He wants to go off of bids for all the tree work. We kept, we've told him more than once he does not have to go off of bids for tree work. So we're going to So he wants to do his own little thing. As far as I'm concerned, let him do his own little thing. I've never the highway department does not have time to work with. I've never heard him say he wants to go off a bid. I've had heard him say he wants to work Go back. Him. Well, I'd say go back and Karen's notes here from last time around, but she probably forgot to put it in the election as well. So let's turn this to positive. There is wood that's along the roadsides. Yes, there is. That the town may ultimately be responsible to clear. Unfortunately, yeah, because the town and you have. So with that, if there is a way to encourage the taking of that wood right. by others, that my question is her, should I direct in this towards the highway to, to be the first kind of like, yes, that wood's there, please take, go talk to the property owner, or should, or should I turn the language around to go talk to the property owner to see whether or not the owner is going to take responsibility? I, as the highway department, and I'm not the one that's been doing the tree work and everything else, I don't want to give them the permission to do that. No, no, because no. I don't know what's going on. The permission would be that please take advantage of it. Go talk right. to the property owner. Is the way I would, the, the way I would I'll give you an example. We did that work down on Quaybox Street down there. Yep. There was some stuff there that we cut in front of one of the houses here. I thought they wanted the wood, but the wood's still sitting there because they have an outside wood burn. They never bothered picking it up. But everything else down the line, we knew, I knew whose field it was and everything else. They didn't care about the wood. And I basically told people first come, first serve the next time. And they, 90% of this so, 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 so by that explanation, it should be directed through the highway department because Herb has a better working knowledge of it. He does. 
And I just, you just. They can call. They can call a highway car. You just sunk your own ship. I right? know. Oh. <laughs> you did. Well, <laughs> that's, you, you have, you have that, that's why it's hard to work with somebody that's over here and trying to get us to do this over here because there's no. But, so it has, you, have, you have to work better together. So, so. And it, it takes two people to work together. Right. It takes two people to work together, but the problem is, is it's not. So let's, I've told let's, three let's times let's keep making it the happen. vendors are, had not been paid and everything else. Yeah. And, and we took care of that. And Cindy in the room, I had asked you last time, come through me. Once it, once I got that, <clears> it was <throat> taken care of. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, there, but why shouldn't we? We had the discussion I, two her, months her, ago. We're good. We're good. So, yeah. Yeah. Punk, they should call the highway department and we will. Let them know what we know, and if I don't have an answer, from there, I guess. They can, right. then they would ch check with the property. So we're going to encourage the yes. use of taking of this wood to reduce that cost. In this the yes. second piece for my commitment to you is to have a conversation where we can start working the logistics a bit better. With I he's going to be available. I concur. He's going he's to be available. When but, but you have to understand as well as you've, you've been there, you don't get paid for it. He, he has a full time job, he has a family. Yep. He's a volunteer. That's so if, if you could just take that into consideration when you have these moments. The, you, you've you've the watched, you've watched, you've watched that's, the same it's all well yeah. the, the thing is, is when vendors do not get paid, well, that has nothing to do with wood left on the side and coordinating with it, but ultimately, yes, I, 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 get it. I get it, I get it. But, but, that, that but it did work, because as soon as Steve got that email, we we got that taken care but of. But we shouldn't have to do this over I, and over I, every I, time I, you, you, you this, shouldn't, this, but this depart, it, it's, every life, time. it's life, and you know what you got to do. We're, but I, I bet you the vendors that sent the bill in from last time around that did the work last year for them, I bet you they got paid right up in front, I right off the bat. So I think I got you in trouble. That's fine. Because <laughs> the wood at 92 to 94 rice water. Yeah, that big pine. Yeah, I, I blame that on National Grid because that's who I thought cut it. Oh no. So that's that, mine. So would that be also fair game? To yeah, the, the, yeah, the uh, homeowner there does not want any of that. All right, so okay, so I, I can I know how to handle that. Yeah, the right. homeowner does not want any of it, and if somebody that that really wants it that's close by, okay. you know, I have no problem running up there with a set of forks and getting rid of it. Yep. You know that. You know, I'm gonna see if I can get rid of it for you. You know, instead of somebody sitting there on the edge of the road, I prefer to clean the mess up over there and get rid of it if the homeowners don't want it. Right. So but that will be spring. Yeah, it's definitely going to be spring because it's through the winter it's going to be hot. It'll, but you know it's going to get harder when the brush grows in. Oh, yeah. Spring time. Spring. We got a weeks. My fingers are crossed, Steve. Yeah, mine too. Okay. All right, thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Snow day policy. We don't have oh, one this time. I was going to, and I was going to see if her, he probably knows the roads quite better than anyone. I was going to wear size on snow, snow day. What, what does it matter? You don't come in anyways? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, at that point, my road wasn't flat. Right, right. And I have a van that's not good in the snow. Um, so We're but all we also had two people go off the road on their way home. So that's not good either. Snow we just want a policy. I will, can I bring up what it used to be? Was it written and implemented? It, if it was written and implemented, then it well, used to be There's two snow. parts to this. Oh, yeah. there's, two, there's two parts yeah. to this to yeah. consider for the guys that do have to work, yeah. the police, the highway, we'll pick you up. EMS. Do they get a comp day because they are working? Or is that I think just it should be double time and a half. Well, the snow policy for the I town hall. Policy. That's the awesome. snow policy for the town hall used to be years ago. If there <clears> was uh, no school, then the town hall was closed, and then if it was an hour or two hour delay, the town hall would follow that same. I thing. just assumed that was still in effect, but I guess it was. That's what it was. Now the policy, you have to use your own time, is that the policy? Or is it, because right. that's what everyone says to me, is that when they go home, they have to burn their own vacation time or, or whatever. Right, that's, and that's not right either. We've, we've never done that since I've been here. And for me, being elected, it doesn't really, but... I can also do, but this a doesn't lot of take this doesn't take into account Herb and Cindy. Exactly, that absolutely. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's definitely two parts to it. So, 
And they shouldn't have to work when everybody else has a day off without some sort of compensation, whether it be comp time or time and a half. All right, so I'm not willing to entertain any motion right now because we're getting really you know, in depth with it. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything in the policy book. I have never seen anything. Yeah, and I'm just asking for some sort of direction. So let's let's revisit it at the next meeting and we'll go from there. We have a recommendation by the personnel committee. Well, again, if that's not there. It's not. I got a question. What do you classify a snow day? Just like you said, school. We have one that. Well, I mean, how bad is bad? I mean, I work when I used to work for companies. I never missed one day because of snow in 20 years. I'm with you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, what's a snow day? I mean, if we have a major blizzard, that's, 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 that's a different story, you know. And this is, uh, these are so we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll see what we have, and we'll come back as a board and. Yeah. and not everybody has a whole yeah. wheel drive. Yeah. I didn't have a whole wheel drive too. Well, uh, I don't want to put on it. Well, are you talking about that? No, 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 no. Oh, I'll bring this up. I ain't driving now. Okay. We all settled there. Yeah. Twenty years now, sir. Twenty years now. Twenty years now. Item number two, resignation. I'm uh, going to entertain a motion uh, to accept the letter of resignation from Mr. Sniffen with regret from the um, Brookfield Community Media Committee. I'll make the motion. Um, with a letter of appreciation sent out to the chair. Um, He's put a lot, it's a shame to lose it. He's put in a lot of work. So, but without uh, moving forward with this motion, any further discussion? No, no motion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then as Mr. Holcraft states what next, um, did you want to speak to that, Ms. Mahoney, as part of that committee? Or? No, I'm speaking to that. What I offer to Ms. Mahoney and, and the other members of the committee is that, uh, as you'll recall, we did have a conversation about connecting with Tantasqua. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we want to make that connection and at the same time encourage others to possibly participate in the committee. So I will volunteer to chair a meeting with the current committee on March the 23rd where we're looking to encourage and what will happen in the citizen article for this month is we will notify as long as the board approves uh, or suggests that this is okay that uh, we'll move forward with the March 23rd organizational meeting where we'll look to encourage others. At that meeting, we will also talk about the Tantasqua current arrangements and the use of media uh, students. I'm, I'm not willing to support the use of kids at $35 an hour to make a tape. So if, that, if that's the case, I mean, to be discussed, uh, the current practice is that students are used to tape and two other Tantasqua district towns, that's what it's called, um, <laughs> at, at, a, uh, at a rate of $35 per meeting. And so that, that's, the, that's the, the going rate as far as the TED test will need it. I think we need to talk about that and <coughs> we need to talk about the whole strategy about media. And again, I think I look to the current committee to give us some direction and thoughts as well as to see what other volunteers. So if you speak, if you've had discussions with them, what's their opinion on the $35 rate? Fantastic. Oh. The current Brookfield community. I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. I, I, I informed them of that. And I think that we need, need to have a conversation of if that's the going rate for the students. Uh, and again, these are trained and capable young people that may be or may not be available. Uh, I think we need to go down that path and understand it and bring it back to this body. Well, for, this. For, for teenagers that have probably a semester of training, $35 an hour with our equipment is oh, kind of ridiculous. It's outrageous, totally outrageous. People don't even make that on the private sector. You, 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 okay, let's, let's listen. Well, I mean, that really outrages me. I ran that camera for seven years with no pay, and you're gonna have some kid from high school come in here for 35 an hour? It's no, not even worth a discussion, Clarence. I'm outraged with that statement. Hey, well, put me back on the side, would you please? All right. Because I'm going to ask you to listen to what I said. Okay. What I said was $35 per meeting. So if the meeting is 20 minutes, they get $35. If the meeting is four hours, they get $35. That's what I attempted to, to say. So, yeah. again, at least there are two, mo two people in the room from what is suggested that that is inappropriate. I understand that. Okay, fine. 
But what I'm going to do is encourage other residents to participate in a meeting so that we can understand how to go forward. Because what we did is we burned up Jim Stepin. Realize it. We had a good guy, has capability. Oh, yeah, we had, had a great guy. Yeah. And we beat him up, yeah. and he's gone. How'd you beat him up? I didn't. I don't think anyone did. That's for those. All right, so the, the way we need to move forward is let the current committee come back to the board with recommendations. Yes, they need yes. And, and what I volunteered to, to do with the committee is to meet on the 23rd of March with the current committee. To, to, to brainstorm these kinds of things, encourage others to come forward. Well, that, that's, where, that, that's where it's at, is, is people out there, when, when you see a blank white screen with words on it, and you come back to everybody and complain about it, you need to get involved. Um, complaining isn't a derogatory negative thing because it's human nature and nothing gets done unless you complain, but we need involvement in town. And if you have these skills, if you have a desire, reach out to the current committee, reach out to the board of select, and we'll get you in contact with these people. We, we need you. So that's the current And again, don't have any good answers, but we'll get something done. Yes. Um, under other. Linda, how would you say that? Okay, under other. I've had um, some of the employees from the town, some of them have come uh, asked me, they're not happy with the task. So I met with um, Larry Van Pott the other day, and Larry has given me another and he wishes that you know the board of selectmen would go over that proposal. And it's good. This proposal he's given us is good until March second of two thousand. Uh, you put that in my box. I have yeah. no okay. desire to discuss that. We've been yeah. down this road. Um, we've had team guys come to us and state that a lot of the issues we said that arose um, was because of his reconfiguration. Um, it's still exceeds anything that we have now. Yeah. I'm comfortable with Fantasma. It's a lower rate. Um, well, he's written a whole new proposal. Right, that's a, uh, his rate is, but one of the main things I think that they're not happy with is, you know, a lot of them being tied into the system. They can go in but to that was other people. that was resolved. It, yeah, but no, it hasn't been resolved because I was showed the other day, I thought it would just should have been just a read on. You can actually go in and change things the way that it's in there right now. So if somebody wanted to did, change some information. This is like the third time we've gone down this road. They haven't resolved the issue? I don't know if you're talking about me in particular. No, not yours. So another, yeah. You know, the water department, Bruce showed me the other day that you could still go in to the information. How long ago? This was just, um, this was a Wednesday. You can still go in like with so, the So my, my question was, were they ever contacted? Or was this just kept until today's meeting? No, they were contacted. Task has been contacted. Were they contacted when you found out about it? No, I didn't contact them. So how can they fix something that they don't know about? But this has been going on all along. I, I would agree with that. And, but, but and they, I thought the problem was resolved. And I that's why too. I waited to So I'm, I'm going to call them after this meeting. I'm going to stay on top of it until all computers are resolved because I'm going to go right to that boy and I'm pretty upset right now. And then I know Brenda's concern was too, she, you know, when she gets with her new uh, tax software there, she really doesn't want to be connected on with the network. Like, because I, I guess the town accountant isn't on with her and the treasurer's not on board because, you know, they could just go in and switch information. I mean, that's. And I get the fact that he's trying to protect. Basically, protecting people from ruining town software yeah. or sabotage. Yeah, exactly. But on some level, I think we should have admin rights on our own computers because we are entrusted to be um, looking out for what's best interest of the town. But when I have to wait a day to upgrade my own bank software because the bank so sends he, out a new he patch. He didn't address that either because I spoke he to He does, but it takes a day, mm -hmm. and I don't have a day, especially when So the, So as far as I'm concerned, he never addressed the issue. He did. He did, fixed it the next day. I, and I appreciate the guys. I think they do a decent job, but they're just not available, and that's all. There is the no other way to say it. They're not available during the day. We can't text them, we can't call them, no, we, we can, can send them an email. You can call, well, you can email on Larry's them. behalf, you call Larry, he's in he your office in within an hour or two, yeah. always. always. And I don't know why we ever got rid of him. I think he was a 
fabulous employee. And well, I think he, he, I, this, yeah. what, what happens here is it turns personal because he's a town resident and he's known by all. It's not personal to but, me, it's a business but he deal. But he might take it personal because <coughs> it's, it's a human being, it's human nature. The proposal that he brought before this board, in my opinion, was outrageous. But I the, the said he the resent another proposal. Sent and it's still outrageous to me. The, the issue that I heard from Tantasco when two individuals came into the town hall and I was in that room, they stated that he's the one that reconfigured everything and caused these problems. But I don't. I think that's their take on yeah. that, and I don't believe what they're saying is the end all either. I don't think. Who are they to judge what he's doing they're, as a job? They're, they're, they're the he's ones, got ten years' experience on them. There's, there's the one that they are the ones that set up the whole server. So they know that server inside and out. Right, and we've had issues with that server yeah. over because, and over again. Because, so because Larry's gone in and reconfigured. I don't think they can just blame Larry for everything. Yeah, I think I, they I need to take responsibility for the problems that are there. And these new computers are all refurbished and they're at least 10 years old. And the same so thing. to me, we fell for a big bait and switch. My computer is worse than the one I had before. So yeah, is too why did we change? I don't know. The change because it was a grant through the school. No, well, we, we got had, stiffed out of this grant is. because these computers are on sale on eBay for hundred and fifty dollars. You can look yourself; they're junk. Well, but, the only good thing is we didn't pay a dollar. Well, my understanding was they were supposed to be new computers. I, I don't call that, it that was that was my belief as well. I, I don't call refurbished computers new computers. Refurbished are not new computers. That's why no, they're called refurbished. Not. And then I know Holly had a problem. I think it was, was it last week. She was working on um, payroll, and she called up, and she had to wait for them to come down. It wasn't yeah. something that the payroll that company could fix on there. That was a big problem. That was like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I don't know, Clarence. Am I? Oh, man, out here, or? It's just the matter they're not available they're not when available. we need them. Well, That's all there is to it. That's the question. It, it is, but when I when I hear, you know, how they contact him at the end of the day and they get back to him the next day. You know, it, 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 there's no doubt in my mind it's not going to be the convenience of Larry. It's not going to be. But in the real world, are you going to get somebody that comes out in a half hour? There's definitely hour? different levels of support yeah. you're going to pay for. I would rather pay Larry a little more for his level of support that he's going to be back in our office within an hour or two than this basic support that I don't know what the difference in pay is. To he's, me, it doesn't really matter well, willing, because we need somebody. We need him now, not tomorrow. You know, especially at the end can of the I, month. Can I have a conversation with that boy and see if we can get it better? And with the new proposal that Larry gave us, it includes 100 hours if we need him, and then if we go over the 100 hours, it's at a reduced rate, I think. For them to work. log in to just to say, okay, to yeah. upgrade something that I could do myself or install a mouse, are you kidding me? I can't even do so that. Can I have a conversation with that? That's where I'm going. My personal that we don't need them. Is, is, is their side of the story yeah. and see where we are. And, and, and again, we have to march. Let's, let's entertain this at the next meeting. So, 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 so the ma major issue is installation of software? It's just the availability of it all. They're not available. They have a full time job. And I appreciate that. I do. And, but it's just they're not available. Because I work in another town, we have a different whole different computer system. Um, computer support in that other town, they're there within the day. If you call with an issue, they're there within and, that business and day. And I've assumed every, and it's not an assumption because I've confirmed and I've followed up on it, every time I've called Cody or anybody else, they're there within the day, either remotely or physically in the building. Well, the problem is they're available after four, right? We close that. Well, they're, four. they're available throughout the whole day. It's just... Not necessarily. That, that's the issue, it's not necessarily. Yeah. Because they have other issues. That they don't <coughs> sure, sure. But that's like every other business. Right. Correct, but I think... But, you know, Larry has another job. What if he's on the road with his other job? I've never not had been able to contact Larry and have him... He, within when we used to use, he always used to answer the phone. Oh, You're right. Right. He did have another job. He would check, Mike, I'm in Boston. I'll be no. back. I'll be, at, I'll be at your station in two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, sometimes I did call to school and they, I didn't get a call back for a day or two sometimes. Right. And I can't afford that. That's, it's un not to get a call back in a day or two is completely unacceptable, don't get me wrong. Let me work on this with her. And, and then if but, but if there's an issue that you can get into a computer, we should hear about it two weeks later in a meeting. There should be a phone call 
you know, regardless of what Bruce says, I can get things done over the phone. There should be a phone. Karen, you can see the phone record of Karen. We're in constant communication. You know that. You work right, but I don't right. think this, I think you're just missing the whole, the big picture. I just think that. No, I understand it completely. I feel that we should. I think you got it in your head that this is the way it should be, and it's, nothing's going to deviate that. And I think no, that not at all. I I can see the forest. I can see each tree. They're unavailable eight to four. And <laughs> That's when we need people. And we've had That's Larry in here every three years, and he's available whenever you need him. All right, yeah. so we all start reaching out to Tim Pass and then we're going to entertain him the next meeting. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. Oh, other, other still well, I'm gonna, uh, you want to go for something before? Anyway, yeah, uh, just uh, back to uh, town signs. Uh, if I see that, I'd ask you to not say anything right now because I had a discussion with him and we have something else. Uh, yeah, I just, got, I just got big. I think I see the same exact plan that I'm seeing and the request was not to deal with it until next month. Oh, this was the property. Yeah, right. Okay. This has nothing to do with okay. This is the notification of the property owners that okay. we are, in fact, in six to eight weeks, going to make something. Okay. And I have copies of the draft letter. Okay. And you can review them. And if there's a problem, let me know. But if there's not, I can just go forward and send them. So these are the four. I waited till the Carmelo's new owner. I was given the new owner's name and address. I can look on the list. Oh, I get to, I get to the same thing. They're all the same. Basically the same letters, with the exception of the uh, home owners, not the new owners. But that was two weeks ago. So my only concern is, is this private property or yes, in, all, in, in, all herbs. Herbs, in Herb's definition, are setbacks and whatnot as a town property? No, these are all the they were all private property, and they were, there were letters originally sent with the exception of the new owners of Camellos. So I'll entertain a motion to allow Mr. Snyder to send said letter to a uh, uh, property owner. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, so I'll just get these in the mail. Okay, thank you, sir. Anything else? Nope. I'm good. All right, the chief has, uh, I think it was through Holly, not through the chief, stated all the items that are on the list that haven't gone yet are literally declared junk <coughs> and not surplus. Um, so I'm going to entertain a motion to allow, at the chief's discretion, all items uh, to be declared junk and disposed of at his discretion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? There are none all in favor. Wait, wait, Brenda had a few. I just had a one quick question. Yep. Um, my husband works for a company in Natick, and they are redoing their entire building. They're going floor by floor. If the town can come up with some sort of laundry list of things that they do need specifically, they might be able to get them for free. So everything? If you, you yeah, give, throw in everything, and then. So who's going to bring? Who's going to make that list up? I don't understand what's going on here. We're getting stuff, or yes. they want us? Getting stuff. No, no get it. Get it. Oh. Make a list have have like a specific list of like. Is it just the police department, or is it the highway department, the town hall? Anybody from the town. So, do you want to leave the charge of reaching out to each department? Sure. I'll send out an email. It might be easier for him to devise a list of what they have and let them handpick from it. Okay. It's typical office building, so I mean, because I know Mr. O'Connell had. Um, connections with an organization that him and I went down to Boston and we filled my trailer up with stuff. He, yeah, that's he, what he, he physically donated money for that. How would you like a brand new electrically operated, we would have to hook it up electrically, uh, overhead uh, screen? Not for this picture. Well, I have, I have a screen available. You're going to donate it? Yes. Why wouldn't we take it? Okay, so I'm going to get sure. it here. Yeah, it's a 20 foot screen. Thank you. Thank you. So, are you okay with the list? Sure. Thank you. It'll just be an Excel sheet. I think we all have Excel. Um, our electrical inspector has requested uh, security badges for all our inspectors. We had this as an issue yeah, with our had, assessors yeah, before. We've talked about that before. Brenda, do you, is, is the machine still working? We finally got the machine back a year or two ago. What's that? The, the ID machine. machine. The ID machine. I don't wear one. Is it in the vault? Last time I knew Mike had it in the vault. It, it did work. Was, I got it to is work. It, was it put in the vault, I thought? 
think so. Yeah. Did you get it to Ron? Yeah, yes. Brenda I made up a few. All right, so can I have him reach out to you to get our inspector's ID badges? Sure. I don't even know where it is, though. I, think well, it's I, I, I did put it in the safe with Mike because yeah. I didn't want it to walk away again. Okay. Yeah. So if we could just look for it. As long as it's working, I'll reach out to uh, Scott and have him contact you or the inspectors contact you for that. Okay. Right. Um, now, the yeah, elephant. It's really time consuming. Am I going to have to do them? I have no idea. I, I'm assuming you're the only one that knows how to do them. So the answer yes. Brenda, show me how to do it. Can we get a water <laughs> cooler? What? I mean, we, could, we could fix the whole handicap water issue if we just get a water cooler for the town. Where did this one come from? I'm just saying. Well, you're the one who brought up the handicap no, water. Bob brought it up. He wants us to put water in. Oh, we, I have a right. solution. We could just get a water cooler. Yeah. Then people could poison it, no? They're pretty yeah. reasonable. Yeah. We have one at the gym. It's hardwired in. It's just, yeah. there's little cups there and it's... And it's low and All right, so but that's that's not in this discussion right now. Okay. Just um, on what is process. <laughs> thank you. I thought it was I thought he was actually gonna recommend that versus water bottles myself, so I was seems a little that. more efficient. Yeah, that's more efficient. You recommend the water bottles, but he, he wanted just little individual water bottles on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy though. He's, he, he's means well. he does. He's he's I thought I was conservative, but he well, he's conservative. He's old school. He's definitely old school, good guy though. Um so before it got heated, and I apologize because I take it very personal, I, I'm, I'm invested in this town hall, I'm invested in this project, and it, it is personal and it is offensive. The $2,600 on this estimate, first and foremost, I had issue with our town clerk, i.e., I guess he was under the, the purview of Board of Health reaching out to the plumber. Um, great, whatever it is, it got the ball rolling. I reached out to Mr. White on Mike's request. He gave me his number, um, reached out to him, asked him all contact to come through the chair because we have to allocate the money, not the town clerk. Right. I'm a little upset right now to see the date on this, being about two or three days after I spoke with Mr. White, that he's still communicating with Mike. Um, Mike's not in the loop on this. Mike's whole goal, and justifiably, is to get that bathroom connected to the sewer. This estimate is showing 30 feet of four inch cast iron. We don't need 30 feet of cast iron. I, I just, to me, $2,600 for that project is way too much. It has to get done, obviously. It has to be done. I think we reach out to a few plumbers if he's not willing to do it. So I don't know how we want to entertain a vote for that. But, but do you want that? So this is where it goes back to. Now Mike's going to get involved again. Do you want this coming through the chair negotiated or the board of health? No, you you, you took the responsibility. Yeah, it should come through the chair, not the board of health. Exactly. As long as you're willing to do the work. Oh, 100%. My, my discussion with him was, was $2,000. He could get it down to if he didn't have to. He said it was going to take him four hours to, to let it up, to open and let. Not having to do that now, he said he could get it down to around two grand. Do you want to make the motion two grand or do you want to no, stay at 2600 Just to come in and get a discussion. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so moving forward from there, I lost my train of thought. What else do we have on the table in regards to this? There was another issue that I completely forgot about. You're going to get a vacuum thing down here? Yeah, that's all part of this. Yeah. You're going to get oh, no, no, here it is, the funding. So in this motion, do we want to accept the reserve fund request, or do we want to wait? I think we have to do the reserve fund request. So the, the motion is going to be to allow the chair... With the sink? To allow the chair to proceed on said project not to exceed $2,600, with funding to be either from the reserve fund or an appropriate account. Is that a good motion? That sounds yeah. good. You good with that? So I'll yeah. maintain that motion. I'll make that motion. Do you have that motion? Yeah, it's, I'll yeah. second it. So for discussion. Any discussion? Yep. Yeah. Just here's my, here's yeah. my thought. Are you then teeing into that line or would you tee later into that part line? Of, part of the discussion. My, I say he's wicked conservative, Mr. Wall. I'm conservative as well, I think we all are. I want it to be ABS, because if it's just short term, he's not gonna let us move point as well. Fran had said that he wanted to put a Y on it so it would connect into that. Yeah. It would save money, yeah. but 
I don't know if we need that, and that's part of the discussion that I'll have, if it's just going to be band joints, because it won't be lead and oakum. It's going to have to be broken anyways, the cast iron to cap it, so I don't know if we need that Y on it yet. Okay, so let's if, it's, if it's going to save us money... If it saves yeah. a couple bucks, just get the Y and yeah. you'll be done. Yeah. So you're if okay it, with me? Yeah. 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 We, it's it's got to be tied in, because we can't have problems like that. But, but it, it's, it's insulting, too, that it's not... It's the pipes that were there. It's not the no, whole no, setup. No, no, no. So every, everything just gets blown out of proportion, and it was frustration. It, it's got completely frustrated, and it's it's You're obvious, and it's apparent. And I, I apologize. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. any further discussion? No. No. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other items? Oh, there's nothing on the agenda for next week. Do we want to change our meetings around? Seeing we had a meeting, do we want to cancel the 16th and 1st and move to the 23rd, 8th, and 22nd? Basically, shift the days. Okay, so uh, the next department had a meeting, the same meeting. We've, we've said you and I had something. It's April. It's April, let me, so not March. Okay, so April, what we would prefer is uh, uh, April what, 12th, I think it was. Correct. For the April department. Well, how about March and all the doors? Yeah. Well, we do have we do have meetings scheduled for April. You're saying change the April department meeting to what? The 12th, 12th I believe, is the 12th. second Friday. April, there's no April 12th is a Tuesday. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, because we're, we're having a meeting. It, it would be the second Friday in April. It'd be April 8th. 8th. April 8th. Okay. Well, that's that has nothing to do with what I'm discussing. No, no, no. no we were just yeah. so I'm checking. Well, my my recommendation is to get rid of the 16th, put in the 23rd. Get rid of the first, put in the eighth, get rid of the fifteenth, put in the twenty second, get rid of the twenty ninth. So it'd be third twenty three, uh, March first. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Feb twenty third. Feb twenty third, yeah. March eighth. March oh I'm sorry, March eighth. Okay. So we're talking the the twenty third of Feb. Okay. Are you doing this just for your own notes or do you agree? Yeah, i you say, well, you know, I can't remember the No, uh, February 21st, it's free. Okay. And now what else? No, February 23rd. Yeah, February 23rd. I said the 21st. No, the 23rd. Okay, so 23rd, March, 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 March 8th, okay. Actually, you know what? I would recommend that we don't have a March 8th. Stop at February and then keep the regular March meetings because it falls in line with our April deadline for articles. Oh. And we have a department head meeting on the 4th anyway. So if the 1st goes away, we still have the meeting on the 4th. Then we'll have a meeting on the 15th. Oh. Okay, so. Yeah. And then um, so we, we, would, we would cancel March 1st. Okay. Cancel March. We would cancel February 16th. Mm -hmm. We would add February 23rd. So March 8th. So we're going to move on the 23rd March 8th. Okay, and then um, also. And that, that's the only change. Okay. If I could make an announcement, if anyone is interested, on March 14th, 6 p.m., uh, there's going to be a public hearing on the school bus at the elementary school. Anybody's interested there? So I'm going to entertain a motion to cancel February 16th and March 1st and change it to February 23rd and March 8th. I'll make that motion. No second. Any discussion? Nope. Not all in favor? Aye. Uh, any other issues before the board? Not other than the board What's that? Yeah, but b before we do. Yes. So I'll entertain a motion to enter into executive session number two to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contact negotiations with non-personal uh, personnel. Uh, I'll make that motion. With, with yes. the, uh, while re-entering into regular sessions with the sole purpose of adjournment. So we have a motion? Yes. We have a second. Motion. Come to our eye. Lincoln, I. Thank you, everyone.